Hi, my name is Alper. I'm working as a penetration tester and cybersecurity consultant. Today we'll go over a WoolHub machine inclusiveness and see how one might compromise this computer. We'll start as usual with Nmap uh, dash S M capital P to find our target. Once we have found our target, we'll start a more extensive Nmap scan. In this case, I'll be scanning all the ports with dash small p dash. And I'll also ask Nmap to get me the version number of any service it might find on any port with dash S capital V. The results are fairly typical of a CTF or hack the box machine. So we'll have uh, port 21 open running FTP, very secure FTP. Uh, we have port 22 running a fairly new version of SSH. And we have port 80 running Apache. We will go step by step over possible attack vectors for each. Um, as SSH is fairly new, this is the vector I'll leave for last. And I don't have enough information to start any brute force attack at this stage, so this is for another day. I'll start with a very secure FTP, see if there are any known vulnerabilities on this specific version. For this, um, we have many alternatives. We can do a basic Google search with the name of the service followed by vulnerability. We can use the exploit DB website or search exploit, which is uh, a bunch of exploits already loaded into Kali Linux. We see that some versions of very secure FTP have known vulnerabilities, but it looks like the one we do have in this case doesn't have a known exploit at least. Vulnerabilities are not always related to code, so we might have vulnerabilities coming from misconfigurations, for example. And we do have a number of Nmap scripts that could help us identify different versions of vulnerabilities. As you can see, even for FTP, we have a number of uh, Nmap scripts that could help us identify vulnerabilities, or like ftp anon that would help us identify a configuration mistake. Anonymous FTP login would allow anyone to log in to the FTP server without having valid credentials. Just to check it, I'm running a Nmap scan and I'll be running the script with dash dash script equals ftp anon As you can see from the results, yes, FTP anonymous login is allowed and it looks like I can write uh, to a folder named pub. We'll just go ahead and check this manually, see if we can really connect to that FTP server and if uh, we can also upload anything in case we needed that. I'll use the credentials anonymous and anonymous as a password. And sure enough, we can log in. This is the pub folder that Nmap had already identified. And yes, we. it looks like this is open for us to log in with uh, the user anonymous and do pretty much whatever we want. As we are, it looks like we are dealing with a Unix Linux uh, system. I would like to upload something that could be useful for me at a later stage. So I'll go ahead and use a web shell, a PHP web shell. Since it's a Linux machine, it's no use to uh, loading a ASP a shell, for instance. I'll use the PHP reverse shell that is already uh, co that comes with Kali, so it's already on Kali Linux. This shell was developed by Pentest Monkey, and it's uh, commonly used throughout the industry. And it's fairly use, easy to use since all you have to do is change your IP address and the port on which you want to receive that reverse shell. I'll use Vim just to edit these two. The IP address here will be the IP address of my Kali Linux since it's a reverse shell.
Reverse shell are fairly common. Uh, we happen to run across them during uh, the penetration test. Shells left by either previous tests or uh, even attackers. These will provide also a future foothold for any other attackers as well. Once I've done the configuration, I will just move the, the shell file to my desktop, which is where I will upload it from. It's always good practice to keep track of what you were doing. And I'll use the previously established FTP connection to just upload it. The help command in FTP will list the commands I can use, and here put is already a command that FTP knows, and that's the command I'll be using. So put slash root slash desktop slash shell.php, which is the file I just prepared, and shell.php for the name uh, on the server. Here I can confirm that shell.php is in fact loaded on the server. That's pretty much all I can do with anonymous FTP. I need to find a way to run this uh, PHP script, and I'm hoping uh, the web application, whichever whatever web application they have here, will help me do that. I'm, uh, what I see is a default Apache index page, which doesn't give me much information, to be honest, and it also doesn't provide much of an attack vector. So I'll use Nikto to quickly see if there is anything I can, else that can be useful, that, can, that I can use for an attack. Nikto can be considered as a vulnerability um, scanner, maybe. Um, it will just give me information about the type of the server, if any protection or header are missing, if there are any files that could be interesting that were left um, out on the open, and the like. But just as a, a reminder, Nikto will not let me know, for example, if there's an SQL injection or a cross-site scripting a vulnerability on the target. It will just look for misconfiguration or errors or vulnerabilities on the server. Since Nikto doesn't, doesn't give me much, I'll just enumerate further. Here I'll use DearB, but you can use DearBuster, GoBuster, or any other tool for that matter that can uh, list directories. And here, once it starts, we can see that robots.txt exists. Robots.txt is always interesting from an attacker's perspective, as it's basically whatever the system admin is trying to hide from the world. So maybe they have a login page, they don't want Google to index, so they want to keep it uh, secret or is uh, hidden from the world and well for uh, search engines it's yes uh, a list of pages that uh, they can index but for the attacker it's a list of pages that could be interesting the problem here is that robots.txt gives a warning it says you are not a search engine so you cannot view this page uh, uh, so we'll have to find a way to bypass this. It's just uh, checking to see if I'm in fact a search engine, and if I'm not, it's not allowing me to connect. One way I suspect it can do that is using user agent information. So I'll just send a curl request with user agent Googlebot uh, and try to trick the target into thinking I'm Google. And uh, fair enough, it works. What they were trying to hide was this file or page, secret information. Once there, I see that it's a basic definition of a DNS zone transfer attack. Um, it has two versions, English and Spanish. In the URL, I see a lang equals. Um, normally, if I see an equals on the URL, I would think of SQL injection, thinking that it's some information they are getting from the database. So in this case, it's fairly obvious that it's not, but just to make sure that I'm not missing something, I'll just try to see if 
anything works, I can break anything with a comma or um, the like. No, so it's in fact uh, a file. So en.php and es.php are two files located on the server. And what I'm trying to do now is see if I can reach other parts of the server, other files on the server. And to test that, I'll just go for etc uh, slash psvd. And here, for example, I get the user information, which could be interesting. For example, if I would like, if I want to brute force that SSH we've seen earlier, I see that I have limited uh, uh, a limited account on this server since I cannot reach etc slash shadow. And well, this could be in fact our a way to chain the two vulnerabilities together. So I have a file that I have uploaded with the FTP. And now I have a way of running uh, files on the server. So I just have to put them together. My problem at this stage is that I don't know where my shell.php file is. And this is what I'll try to figure out. Um, fortunately, I can reach uh, the very secure FTP configuration file. And that would give me information about where the files that I upload are saved. So here we can see that they are on their war uh, slash FTP. So now I know where my file is. I'll just need to, um, as you remember, it's a reverse shell, so it will try to connect back to me on a specific port. So before doing anything else, I need to make sure that I have something listening for that incoming connection. So I'll use netcat for that. And I'll listen on port one, two, three, four. And now if everything works according to plan, I will be able to get a reverse shell just by triggering the shell.php file that I have uploaded. I will go under war ftp slash pub slash shell.php and it seems to work. Yes, we do have a shell. We are connected to the computer with a user a www data. It's, as we know from earlier, a limited uh, privileged user. So now for privilege escalation, this is the only part I didn't really enjoy with this machine. It's uh, to CTFE, um, if that's even a word. So we have this root shell that C uh, file who gives us a direct way to uh, elevate our privileges. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll try to do more of these. If you have any comments, please let me know. If you liked it, please like. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.